Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, can you believe it? That right, that moment. Again, it's upon us. Agnes Vivarelli, always nice to see you. Uh, Dan's here with you, or Dirty Down, as it says on the top on my side. Pretty funny. Uh, anyway, it's a game name. Uh, but uh, yeah, Dan Radio Style. We're talking about some amazing tips on how you can manifest faster. So, of course, we're going to do it in our very organic nut kind of way. And certainly... Just before we get too carried away. Anya, how are things going? How are you doing? Hello, Dan. I'm Say good. I'm in London and I'm enjoying being here now. Change of space, change of place. All right. Australia was awesome though, I'm assuming. Yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, I love it. I love, I love, love, love Sydney. I love Sydney. All the, yeah, all the killer <laughs> creatures, the animals that could kill you. <laughs> the- Horrible insects yeah. that are deadly. Um, yeah. Pretty much everything can kill you in Australia. It's fantastic. So welcome home to a place where <laughs> only just spiders and whatnot maybe exist. But uh, yes. they're I all sad from the much weather. Much safer here in London. Nice. I love yeah. London. Feels Very safe. good. <laughs> <laughs> right, I can imagine, right? Especially considering. Yeah. So we've got uh, some wonderful tips. And there's four of them in particular. And you actually have a video in particular that I was watching. Actually, it was fun. It was before the video was starting with her and I, when we first got on our meeting, I was like playing it. I'm like, ah, I'm watching you, watching you, watching me. Like it was kind of funny. Anyway, so, so great tips that work to help yep. manifesting and really the core to what gets us there, right? So uh. let's, let's start it off. Anya, take us, take us down. I think you have a stool uh, kind of analogy that yes. I think is really, really, really awesome. And so let's, I, let's I drew a very special picture. She, and she went top dollar, people. Yeah. Hang on, let me shut up so that people can see. It looks, up. it is a stool, even if it looks like an octopus. <laughs> uh, or an udder, maybe, if you're a cow person. <laughs> oh, yeah, a cow. You got an udder thing going on there, maybe. I don't know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so we'll talk about the cow udder today. Yes, yes, the udders. Now, the four legs of the udder, if you will. The four legs of the udder. We are talking about the easiest tips that I know and yours, we will add yours in too, Dan, because yours is slightly different to me. So we'll do both. The okay. Two, what you do, okay. I'll do the stool. You do the cow udder. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> you said tips and I was trying to refrain from saying no pun re- required there. Um, yeah. The tips of the udders. <laughs> the Go ahead. Yes. Udders. Okay. So the first one, And this is from experience, testing things out, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't work over the last 30 years. And this is the best I can come up with as in what's worked for me. So the first one is self-love. Self-love is broken down into two things, meditations. So it's self-love meditations and affirmations. Affirmations for you, as in I am loved, I am healthy, I am wealthy, I am secure whatever affirmations you need to do for you to counteract the negative beliefs you have and the negative thoughts and also affirmations for whatever you desire. So if it's more money, money comes in faster than I can spend it. If it's a relationship, this is the best relationship I've ever had. So you write your affirmations down, a little section for you and a section for specific affirmations for that desire. I love it. And I'll just uh, maybe a couple on top of that, because there's yep. no way to top self-love. That's like totally one of the legs of any stool that anyone's going to talk about with manifestation is really you got to look at self-love. You got to look at, am I allowing behaviors that, you know, shouldn't be there? Maybe I'm trying to change them. Sure. That's one thing, but like, really like we've attracted to us what's going on. So mm. self-love, really got to look at what's going on with, uh, with, with the self-love, but you say affirmations, the other side of it that I think, and I did a video on it at one point was called affirmations formations and I, yes. I'm not the one that made up the concept but it's more yep. adding the why right adding a little more context to the affirmation because sometimes I am with him I am together with her I am where I am in Vegas I am right we can come up with all sorts of powerful phrases yep. but if it's something you don't really believe or maybe something that needs a little context so your brain can mm. believe it, yep. it's one of those things that allows your mind to I think move forward easier yep. Uh, with the affirmation. So again, when we're trying to work on the self-love mm-hmm. and we're having those moments where we're doubting ourselves, where we don't think we're pretty enough, we don't think we're good enough, we don't think we're whatever enough. Yeah. Like that's that moment where you can kind of say, ah, but I've been working on it. I'm making it, right? Like you can give it some context Yeah. and, and, and hopefully kind of get yourself to be like, yeah, no, you've come along with, yeah, you are right. Like you got to be your own champion. If you're not, yeah. no one's going to be. So that's self-love too. That whole yeah. part of that. It's beautiful. It's yeah. okay. So that's one leg of a stool. Obviously, any stool with just one leg requires one a leg of a stool. Yeah, so the second leg, 
is whatever you've got going on that's negative in terms of your thoughts, in terms of your beliefs, in terms of your feelings and emotions, to dissolve anything that's got going on that's, you know, not good, doubt, worry, sadness, using the whole Pono Pono as a really good distraction because you've got to learn to control your mind. If you cannot do that, you cannot manifest because it's harnessing what your focus is on. It's a focus-based universe. You get a photocopy from what you're focusing on. So you must harness that. ka chung ka -chung. <laughs> You still remember I love that. it, man. I love that. My favorite. Oh, ka -chung, ka -chung. And the hand so gesture. The, the, the hand gesture, ka -chung, ka -chung. Yeah. <laughs> I love it, too. Yeah. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I can't. All right. Anyways, yes. So, so some sort of, um, yeah, go ahead. Dissolve yeah, so it's got to be that you practice distraction and distraction from the repetitive, habitual, negative thinking. You do that whole pono pono, I find, is one of the easiest ways to do it because it's just four statements. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. Thank you. You're dissolving. You're stepping away. You are disengaging from that groove of being committed to your repetitive, habitual, negative thinking. And Ho'oponopono, being the forgiveness prayer from Hawaii, is a very, very powerful prayer that's been around for a very long time. It's tried and tested, and it is a great way to divert and distract. Now, I feel like it's worthy of mentioning really quick the Ho'oponopono yeah. prayer, right? So please uh, at least carry that part forward. So people are like, well, but what is that? Because I'm sure there's some people that are not sure what the Ho'oponopono is. Yeah. And we won't go into it, but we there'll be some links down below for people right. who want to investigate that in a lot more depth because that Good on call. its own is yeah. quite a little chunky nugget that takes a little bit of time to... So explain. the cat's still in the bag, but we're kind of like just a little. <laughs> so you check it out if you want. It's up to you. It's a, it's but yeah, the whole bottle bottle. And yeah. for me, too, one thing that I got that uh, I've talked about and kind of a little more airy-fairy. So... Yeah. Uh, not your thing. Don't go down that path. If it is more your thing, you know, and you're loving crystals and you curl up to your crystal uh, quartz every night, right? Like one thing that worked for me, I learned from my teacher was called astral letters. So there's a, yeah. a process that you go through. It's, um, it's, it's symbolic in nature. There's aspects that are, it's anyways, again, my link will be below too as well. So it's, it's good stuff. Okay. To check out. Good ways to try to work on dissolving the parts. The key is a tip to try to help manifest better. Yeah. Really, when you when you've got these issues that you're doing all these affirmations for, it's kind of like we say putting a band aid on a wound, but not really treating the wound. Yeah. The first part of this, the first leg, it's like you know one leg's as good as the other. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. But <laughs> you know, all the legs are important. That's my point. All of the udders matter. They're all deliveries, right? So yeah. it's important that you've got the self love going. Yes, because you you need to work on that part that needs healing too. One of the things that happens at the same time when there are self-love issues is you get that, that voice, that noise, that's, and it says the wrong things all the time, right? You ever notice yeah. that? And that's the thing that gets a lot of people off track is yeah. that, that voice. So you have to have waves, like you said, to distract yourself, to maybe oh. try to dissolve that, to deal with that. Uh, we've given some examples. We've got a couple videos you can check out if you'd like to get a little more deep into that. There are some ways that you can heal that, but you need to. Otherwise, you're fighting one and two, right? The first two legs of yeah. the stool, you're constantly fighting each other. And, and you really, you need to understand these are all, you have four legs for a reason. They're all holding you up at the exact same time. So yeah. no one leg is more important than the other. You need all of them. And so yeah. it's very important, I think, to keep that balance. In mind. I'm, I'm interested in what you and I were talking about before we started recording. You said you had five things, five-legged stool. I'd really like to see what that looks like. All right. I mean, yeah, that's a little crazy. I think you only really need three probably in the big picture. But, uh, yeah, I think I did one that way too. But, yeah, I got a five-legged stool apparently in my video. It's got so. a pole in the middle. Oh, yes. <laughs> you spin, like, Woo! You just go all, all around all crazy. It's good times. Mine's oh. more, yeah, more of a merry-go-round kind that's of stool. It. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Number utter, three. Utter or utter or off the The like third other. <laughs> <laughs> it is living in the end through your thoughts. So, you in what Neville refers to as the mental diet or the self, you know, the self talk. So you go okay. 
as you're walking around your day. Oh, I love thinking about having that. That's going to be great. I love having that. That's going to be, whoo, make my life so much better. I feel excited about having it. I'm looking forward to enjoying it. And you start to have the mental diet that backs up you having this thing, whatever it is that you're desiring. So the conversations, the mental conversations during yeah. the day, and you do not, again, allow your head to divert back to, well, what if you never get this? And what if it's never going to happen? You go, okay, well, there's the ball bouncing down the stairs. I've got to catch that, grab it and go, okay, I'm going to do Ho'oponopono to stop that. Or I'm going to have a different mental conversation. You've got to have the mental conversation of the person that has that, whatever that thing is, the person, money, a job, whatever. So, <clears throat> you know, someone said to me recently, oh, you know, this person never calls me and I feel like I'm always waiting for a call, et cetera. Well, I said, do you think that's the conversation, the mental conversation of someone that gets someone that contacts them a lot? She said, no. I said, well, what kind of thought or mental conversation would you have if someone was contacting you every day? Why does that person call me so much? I'm busy. I've got other stuff to do. That right. would be the thought of someone who gets a lot of contact. So you've got to start thinking the thoughts of the person that has the desire already flourished and fulfilled now. That's a great point uh, in, a, well, in a bunch of ways. So living in the end, living as if, right? Those are still, I think, all kind yep. of in that same. Yeah. And it is. It's that mental diet. So again, we're three legs now. And what I think is kind of funny, because <laughs> again, I th I, my, my point, and we were talking about this earlier too, this is like the part of why I got into law of attraction. I think it's cool because it gets us to really look at ourselves. It gets us to really pay attention to how we interact with the world and how we make things happen around us, right? So for me, it's like a larger kind of spiritual thing. But a great avenue is law of attraction. And the first is paying attention to self, noticing self, noticing where there's issues, right? Second is when you find some issues. And what I mean by noticing self is the loving yourself, right? The self, uh, self love. Yep. But when you find some issues that maybe need a little love, you've got to kind of call those things out. You've got to heal them. You've got to have dialogues with them. You've got to wrap your arms around them and hug them. And then when you get to the third part, and this is one of my favorite parts, now you're focusing on your thoughts. Now you're noticing what your common dialogue is during the day. Yeah. This is one of the key places I think most people fail. Yes. They don't hear the thing they keep saying over and over that they're not good enough, that they're not well, this like, this is the thing that keeps showing you your self-love problem. Again, these three legs have to happen so far, at least at the same time. These yep. are the things that are showing you your problems. And if you're not paying attention to your self-love, everyone doesn't want to work on it because it's work. Yeah. But if you're not paying attention to it, then you're probably not seeing the marker signs, the, the warnings, the, the, the things you keep saying about your living in the end where you're, where you're not using the right words or you're not thinking right about your, your manifestation. You keep kind of separating yourself from it. You keep not thinking you're good enough. You keep like, it's, so it's that, it's that paying attention to it. So I think it's very important to notice what you're focusing on, what your mind chatter is, what are the little words you have in your mind during the conversations, you know, throughout the day when you think about this, this person you're trying to manifest or this thing you're trying to manifest. Yeah. And it reminds me too of, of something that's brought up frequently, which is called kind of the intention point. And I yeah. think it's that difference between where your brain's at with it and where your heart or beliefs or whatever is kind of at yeah. with it. And it's sort of that area in between where you kind of manifest from. So mm. I think this leg kind of helps us identify yeah, uh, what that 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 component is within us. So yeah. that's wonderful. One of my favorite utters of all of them. So I'm just saying. <laughs> so we got a fourth one on the on the drawing yes. of, of amazingness. And by the way, people, we fourth spared one? no expense with, uh, with the work yeah. here. It's expensive work here. It's a reasonably thick sharpie, from what I can tell. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Well done. So utter number four: imaginal scenes. Bam. Now, why I bring that up? because you have to live in the solution or live in the desire, having it already fulfilled. Now, one of the best ways I know how to do an imaginal scene is as Neville always talks about using the five senses. Now I've already talked about the five senses and, and imagining. So I'll put the links to that down below, but I think there is very, very, very much. It's such a power to, imagine 
using whatever senses are relevant to that particular desire. So if you want more money, you're going to feel it. You're going to see it. You're not going to talk to it. So there won't be any audio in that one unless you want to jump up and go, wow, I've got heaps of money and hear your own voice. You know, you've got to use the senses that are relevant <laughs> to whatever I, imaginable. I just say, there's so many things I wanted to do there that I didn't. So thank you. Uh, thank you, universe. Yes. <laughs> I would have loved to have heard it. Oh, I was going to scream. There was also anyway. So it was like, <laughs> right? like anyway, so yeah. Good times. But yeah, and if you if you if you're trying to do a relationship one, well, you would see the person visually, the first sense, sight. You would, um, if you get close to them, you can smell their aftershave or smell their their deodorant or body body spray. <laughs> not body odor. That's oh, probably not what you're going for. Wow, a little, a little stinky. <laughs> yeah, that's not um, a good manifest. You would feel them because there's probably a kiss or a hug involved. Um, and then. Um, what other senses are there? Touch. Touch, yeah. And what's the, and here. Taste, right? And we already taste or no? Taste, Remember looking at yeah, the dashboard? Through, Someone taste. brought up looking the dashboard recently and I was like, man, there's a long time <laughs> listener, man. That's looking awesome. The dashboard. That I was good times. That. Yeah. <laughs> so taste, yeah. What do yeah. they taste like? So imaginal scenes with the five senses would be, you know, the recommended way to do that. Now I've got a, a guided one. I think I do, but you can do it totally in the silence. Just close your eyes, imagine your scene, run yourself through it, go back to the beginning, run yourself through it, go back to the beginning, do it half a dozen times, takes under 10 minutes and then you let it go and you move on. So you yeah. go to sleep. You could even find another imaginal scene after oddly, if you want to like keep coming up with new scenes that are still relative to the overall to that, big picture to the overall big yeah, to being together or exactly. whatever. But yeah, I mean, again, you can refocus on the same one. Now this does bring up a good point. I think to bring up uh, in a lot of people, I think get very fixated on the imaginal part of this. Yeah. Right? And I think to use the analogy to stay with the stool concept, if you have one leg, that's way longer than the other three legs. You've got a crap stool is what you've got. <laughs> so you've got to keep these things in balance. Yes. It's very important to have your imaginal work. Yes. Yeah. And yes, it does help increase where you're trying to get to. But what I frequently have talked about, and it's the, it's the circle of the legs of the stool, if you will, but a lot of us do more imaginal work because we're trying to speed things up because it's not happening fast enough because yeah. we keep noticing we don't have it. Yeah. So then we try to do more imaginal work to try to speed it back up because we keep noticing we don't have it because we're trying to speed it up because we're yeah, trying to go. That's and you're so never going to get there when you do that. That's so and true. You've got to really understand that there's a self love component. You've got to dissolve the crap that's blocking you. You have yes. to. You yeah. do. I know you don't want to. And yeah. part of this. If and then, really do, yes, yes. before you go, you go on, yeah. I've heard some people on YouTube say, you don't need self-love to imagine. And that just riles me because you might imagine being with someone and you might attract them, but your neediness is just going to push them away again. So I basically totally disagree with the I think that's that like that. saying that to be good at anything, for example, you don't need to practice constantly. You don't need to have discipline. You don't need yeah. to have, like, I don't think anybody ever got really good at anything by not disciplining themselves. And I think self-love yeah. is that component. It's that discipline yeah. part. It's the part that most people don't want to do. And I, I don't know if we're referencing anyone. And I'm sorry if this hurts. No, anyone, we're not but, referencing anyone. Okay, particularly. Yeah, but I'm just multi, saying, if, I've yeah. seen multiple people do it. And I think, yeah. hang on a minute. I mean, Louise Hay spent her whole career talking about self-love. And the thing is, you may attract someone through just doing the last leg of the stool here. You just imagine someone coming to you and loving you and being with you, but your neediness kicks in when you're not doing your own self-love. That person's going to piss off and get right away from you within a short period of time. So mm, I think I th it's I, just I think one such of the... a huge component. You can't be feeling unloved and attract love. It's the loved that attract I love. Agree. And I hear... love that attract love. Absolutely. And, I, and I, I think what happens with a lot of people that aren't paying attention to self-love and don't want to look at self-love, yep. kind of how it tends to manifest is you'll notice there's a repeating pattern. You keep attracting similar types of people, right? The, yes. the girls are always this way or the guys are always this way, whatever. Yeah. And 
you keep attracting it. And it's generally going to be qualities that are unattractive. So it's very easy for us to put them outside of ourselves and say, well, they're not a nice person. They don't do things yeah. right. They don't take they, time. They, they, they. We yeah. keep attracting that. That's the whole concept of when you point your finger at somebody, you've got three more pointing back at you. Or yeah. as we frequently talk about, one of the most solid examples of us pushed out is when you're doing that, when you're projecting yourself outward and blaming other people for things yeah. that you're attracting, this yeah. is your self-love that's bringing this. So yeah. that's why we, we don't yeah. talk about it because we're trying to sell a book or something on it. It's no. like we're trying to help you get <laughs> your manifestation, the thing you want. And Actually, you, oh, sorry. I'm, not, I'm not trying to sell a book, but I've, I've purchased I, this. And I was I'm like, wait to see I'm your actually, name on the bottom. I was like, oh, I'm, no, no, it's somebody else. But I'm going to show you because Martina, who is a viewer on my channel, recommended this. She bought oh, it cool. and I've ordered it and I finally got it. And I'm working my way through and it's exercises for your self-love. So nice. I will yeah. talk about that in more detail because I'm not, I haven't finished it. But That's fantastic. It is. There's so many good resources to really get yourself in a loving state. And then when you do that, you don't have to work on relationships at all because relationships look after themselves. They really do because it goes <laughs> back to that, that energy you're putting out. I mean, that's why I keep, like, again, that's what's one of the most key things is who you are internally, like the way we see ourselves and think about ourselves and hold ourselves and then what we focus on on a regular basis. Yeah. It's all like they spiral outward. It's, it's, a, I see it as an energy. It's like a frequency. And as you kind of get it to a higher vibration or a better vibration, yeah. or a happier vibration or whatever, it seems to affect what is attracted to us. And I always thought that was kind of really more what the law of attraction was about, or mm. kind of when they talk about the vortex, I think when you're in the vortex, you've got more similar kind of energy stuff with you. So you're in this really cool energy and all this cool stuff happens. And it just sort of, causes more of the same thing more of yeah it's just it's it's powerful it's fun and so yeah i i think that's uh, that's huge so yeah when you work on the self-love and really get that leg of the stool and again i think if you just focused on that and not the other three you, you've still got one leg longer than the other i think all of them kind of matter you've got to handle the, the dialogue inside your brain you've got to be able to really yep. focus on where you're trying to go yeah and you got to give it some clarity you got to yeah. really kind of paint that picture with clarity. So I, I really do think you've got to do all four of these things simultaneously. Same here. I just Same. think a lot of people would w try to make it a three-legged stool and, and maybe it, it works, but the problem is, is you make the other legs work harder. Um, the fourth leg adds some stability and that's the part that really is about self-love. Otherwise you're always yeah. dealing with trying to dissolve stuff, yeah. but you're just putting band-aids <laughs> on wounds. You're not actually fixing the wound. So yeah, your stool will hold you up. Yeah. But you're going to be working a bit harder at it than maybe you need to. And like to your point, if you get that self-love component nailed down, yeah. a lot of the other problems really simplify. It, they it, disappear. They just really to borrow the analogy, that extra leg really helps yeah. support 25% more of the weight, right? So yeah. it, it, it helps. It helps a lot. It does. It does. So, okay, let me ask you, would you, what would be your, if you, have you got any other components that you think are really important that I haven't mentioned? No, I, and I'm curious what I did on the five. Like I said, I was just doing a <laughs> quick search on my channel. I'm like, okay, five tips. Well, what, okay, well, let's add that ones? YouTube down below so that way people. I might, I might add belief. I would say probably just <laughs> ah. off the top of my head, if I was to throw out another leg, belief. Yeah. Which I think is in in here. Like you could, like you know what I mean. Like, but I, I think as a separate leg, um, beliefs are interesting how they yeah. play out in our lives, and I really do think people don't realize sometimes we have got beliefs that are. Um, holding us back in ways yeah. we didn't realize. So yeah, uh, it's up there with self-love too, kind of mm -hmm. self-love and dissolving. I, beliefs kind of, I think, intermixed in there. Yeah, so I probably, agree. I yeah. agree. Well, very good. We <gasps> will have to get together and do another one of these uh, soon. I uh, always enjoy maybe in a couple of weeks. What do you think? Always. Always. Is right. <laughs> Anya, matter. thank you so much for another awesome show. <laughs> and, uh, some great tips, man. That, that, that really cool. It was fun watching your video myself. Uh, this link below, obviously, but um, <laughs> it was. I enjoyed it. It was fun watching it. I'm like, oh, yes, you're you're awesome, and uh, I don't watch uh, enough of you, frankly. Let's be honest. I'm too busy in my life. I know we're to too busy. We don't have time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, you have a good one, and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon. You got, you got any emails? Uh, what are you, you coaching? Anything you want to plug real quick? No, no, that's right. We don't. We don't do that. <laughs> No, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't do awesome. the any of the plugging people. Yeah, there'll be links below. That's our, That's our plugging. That's our plugging. Awesome.
Awesome. Okay, well, let's, um, we say goodbye and then we'll say goodbye yeah. in private. Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate you guys joining us this far. We'll, uh, we'll be back with more great shows yeah. coming soon. Lovely. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Enjoy the stool. <laughs> or the udders. <laughs> or the udders of the octopus. <laughs>